2006, since my last fight, uh, I have four neck surgeries. Uh, there's no more way I can grapple. Also, my knees, if I'm on my knees a lot, I'm gonna, that's payback for three or four days. Afterwards, it's going to blow up. It's going to hurt a lot. So I didn't do anything in grappling. But then I meet this great guy right here, Victor Hugo, six-time world champion, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, black belt. Whoa, yeah, now we're talking. And we started talking. We actually went to a certain doctor. I'm going to have a show about this guy also because he's a freak. And you really need to know about him because if you have crazy injuries, you want to check that guy out. But that's for later. And uh, we were going over some uh, leg locks because I found out that during grappling now, and especially in the no-gi division, any leg lock is allowed. Yeah. And I go, dude, we got to roll. Because I've been training with Funaki, Suzuki, Fujiwara, all these crazy guy catch wrestling. And those have leg locks. Those guys have leg locks that other people simply never saw mm -hmm. before. And you can be a really high level great black belt if you didn't see a certain setup to a move or you didn't know a certain move. One of the two, you will get caught. Sure, with a black belt and especially a guy like this, it will be happening once and that will never happen again. But guess what? Once is enough to win a fight, yeah. I always say. So we're going to go over some leg locks. There's going to be some locks that we're going to save because we're not going to show it out. Because, of course, if he's going to compete and he says, I really want to use that lock, boss, I'm not going to show it now. But then after he Through fought, yeah. we're going to come back and then we're going to show you the whole plethora of leg locks that we have. I also crazy escapes. My, my uh, submission game has been self-taught. Um, and because of that, it was different than anybody else, and that's why I was very successful in it. I like to explode into combinations. And what I figured out is that after a reversal to right away go into a counterattack, that is the best way. Because most of the time, if you reverse somebody in the air, they're thinking, what the heck is happening? And at that moment, what the heck, the thing, uh, when they're thinking that, they're not busy with the fight. And that's when I immediately shoot into an, uh, an attack. And most of the time, you will land it. I just told them I. I know an armbar escape that I roll you into a knee bar right afterwards. I know a triangle escape where I roll you into a knee bar afterwards and now it's going to sound to you like there's no way. I go, there will be a way and you will see it because simply other people don't do it. You know, and I've been very creative my entire life. So that meant that my poor wife, she would have been, and you heard the story probably a bunch of times. I woke her up at least six times in the middle of the night because I would dream a submission. I will wake up, I will wake her up put her in that submission, ask where it hurts your shoulder, right? Just whatever it was, she would say yes, I would write it down, the next day I would go to class and I would start trying it out in class. My whole house was covered with little post-its, with post-notes, because I realized also that, yeah, you can go sit mount position, go to a straight down bar, that's the most basic thing there is. But if I find a different way to go to that same arm bar, a way that he doesn't know yet, hey, I'm gonna be successful with it. But, you know, I had a really good student, Leon Van Dyke, also, we both knew, didn't know anything, but he picked up really fast. So if I would catch him two or three times with the same move, he would have it. I couldn't catch him with it anymore, which would force me to create another setup. And soon enough, I have four or five different setups for every single move. And once you start mixing those up, yeah, then you're going to be very successful. And I truly believe that's the reason, you know, I always, uh, it, it was... Uh, my ground game was much better than people think it is. If you look at my record, I actually more submission victories than knockouts, but everybody only remembers my knockouts for some reason. So I hopefully we can change that point of view uh, once you start seeing what we can do here on the ground. And I think it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I agree. Like I uh, agree. One of the th one of the things that uh, stood me out uh, to for me as far as like your game is like they always look very surprised. Like as soon as you went for a submission, yeah. Like they look, oh, what's happening? And then they will tap. And oh, I think that's also something that is very cool about like grappling itself. It can be very unpredictable. And another thing that I think aligns the way you think that with my with my way of, of thought is is almost like endless, right? Endless combinations. You can always come up with something new. And in oh, my world, I think there's always something that is always happening. That's why I might ask for us to keep a couple of the techniques here not shown yet because I'm going to do it and then they're going to say, oh, he invented. No, we just like went way back and like redid it, you know? So I think that's a good thing about grappling. It's so like, it's so big. That there's always something new that you can do, but there's also something old that you can bring it back that people haven't been doing for a while, right? Exactly. And you know, it, it, it's a game you can never master. I always say that. That's why I miss it. One of the, the biggest things that I miss in my life right now is grappling. Because every single workout, there will be something that I say, man, how could I not have seen this before, you yeah. know? So something really simple 
but super effective. And, and it's like he said, so for you people at home, you know, if you really want to have a great career, do what I did. I do what a lot of other great fighters do, log everything. So you go to a class, you learn new techniques, make sure you have something to write and write it down. Because guess what, if I go to a seminar, for instance, well, I can spend an hour on an armbar, which you need, because if you want to make it perfect, you need it. But then the seminar people, they're going to have anything for the money worth, right? They don't have anything. So I always tell them, listen, I'm going to throw freaking 30 techniques at you, but you're going to forget the first freaking 10 after we're done. So write it down, because once you start writing it down, you can keep going over it. And the ones that are very successful for you, for you keep those. And the ones that don't work, throw them out, because sometimes your body type is not for a certain move mm -hmm. and they simply don't use it you know mm -hmm. and still guys if you see a grappling match if you see him roll and suddenly he goes into a knee bar what was the setup go back now most of the time i already knew what the setup is but sometimes they surprise me i go like whoa that was a very smart thing to do um gonzaga versus Krokop. this is not grappling but this is something that i never thought of and i go my god this is so smart but i didn't know why he was doing it so Krokop is a southpaw and Gonzaga is an orthodox fighter, so it's an open stance. And Gonzaga was constantly throwing a cross in the air. Just constantly a cross in the air. And I go, that's a weird thing to do, why would he do that? And then I suddenly it hit me like a ton of bricks. I go, oh, he plants a seed in Krokop's head. Because Krokop, in order for him to, to, to reach him with the leg, he has to come forward and he has to deliver that kick. If he comes forward at the same time he throws that cross, He's going to get caught, he's going to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. So he painted a picture in his head like, hey dude, constantly he threw that cross in the air. It made no sense until Krokop started thinking, wait a minute, if I'm going to throw a kick at the moment he's punching, I'm going to get knocked out. And it shut his game down. It actually ended up with Gonzaga knocking him out with a head kick. Oh. You know, that was the very first fight in the UFC for Mirko Krokop. You see, so surprises like those I really enjoy and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. Godspeed, I'll see you on the mat. Okay, basics first. This is a move that somebody told me one time and, uh, and that apparently applied to everything in my game. So the grappling didn't really go well, everything was, I was still having trouble, trouble, trouble and then one day I got reversed and then this person told me, he says, boss, you know what you're doing wrong, right? I go, what? He says, well, if you sit on top of somebody right here, and if I push you to that side, you can post a, knee, a leg out, or you can post an arm out, or you can post both out. He says, what I'm doing with you, I trap this arm, I trap this side, so you got nothing to post out, and I simply push you to this side. <clears throat> and that blew my mind. You see how simple this thing is? And I'm not kidding, guys, and it's not put a feather up my ass, it's for real. From that moment on, I think that was a long time ago. Maybe I tapped twice in my life in training. Apparently that applied everything to me. I started submitting everybody. It, it opened the whole world. It was the missing ingredient somehow. Don't ask me how it's possible. Boom, suddenly I knew how to submission. So my last submission lost against Ken Shamrock. My next eight fights I won by submission. Completely changed my life. But this was that moment. So now there's ways, how can I trigger your opponent, my opponent, to, to go put an arm around your neck? Well, there's simple ways for it. It's acting like you're really tired, <laughs> lean back. That's what I always would do, exposing the neck. And once they see something, a lot of people, they see the, the end move. So they go around the neck, and that's exactly what I want them to do. Now, first of all, we're gonna start with a very basic one. <coughs> so I'm on my back, and he's gonna have a mount position. Now, mount position, I always want to make sure that he sits on my belly. The reason I want, if, especially in mixed martial arts, if he starts hitting me now, I just stop walking up and he's going to have to start posting. You see now, if he sits on my chest, there's not going to be a lot of movement. Also, if I want to reverse him, I can't trap this leg, I can't lock it up, so it's, not going, to, it's going to be very hard for me to do something. So meaning, if somebody sits on your chest, you got to push him down. Now, pushing down, it's going to be hard because he's a big guy. What I can also do is simply push my elbows here and push myself upwards. End result is exactly the same. Okay, let's move a little bit downstairs so we don't have anything. So now he sits on my belly, right? So now it's very simple for me. I can lock this foot up. See, I can trap him. And that means that he cannot slide this leg out 
to base himself out. Now I just need to ha have him put this arm around my neck. Now, I don't know what arm he's going to put around my neck. So in my mind, I'm going to be ready for this. Watch this. If he sits up straight, I'm going to be ready for this and push to that side. I'm going to be ready for this and push to that side. This might sound really weird, but it's going to work. For now, let's use this one so I can see it. Now, the, the way I trick people is by laying back and be tired because most of the time they'll take the bait. As soon as he takes the bait, I grab the back of my head, not his arm, back of my head, I grab here and I simply push him to the side because he has no base, I just took his base away. That concept by itself, dude's gonna change everything. Backdoor skates, I can do this from side mount, I can, I can do this in a lot of freaking positions, just trapping one side, trapping the other side. Now, if somebody's in half guard, and you see this a lot in the UFC, and you will see this in grappling as well. So imagine he's in half guard, right? <coughs> now this leg is already here. That means he will be very stupid to put his arm around my neck. Because this base I already take away. Not right now. So most of the time when this happens, first thing I do is I, make, I keep control over his leg. Slide it down, put this one in here. Never, never do this, because he can use this moment to jump out. So always watch out for that. Okay, so you want to always control the leg. I shift it down a little bit, replace it. And now I'm just going to wait, and I'm hoping, and a lot of fighters, and you're going to watch this now, even in the UFC, Bellator, doesn't matter, they make this mistake, he puts the left arm, right arm around my neck. If he does that, see, this is literally the only thing I have to do. And now you're going to go like, it's really, are people that stupid? Watch fights. And you will see this a lot. And in MMA, why it works is because somebody starts hitting you. And instead of thinking straight, they think about the punches. But if you think about the punches, eventually one of those punches is going to come through. Right? What you need to think about is escape. You know? Yes, you take a few shots, but then you reverse him. Now you're on top, you can return the favor. So don't stay with that. Try to go for an escape. Never focus on, you see, my, my mind starts crying out. There's a lot of stuff that I want to say, but well, we're going to come to that in a little bit. What I'm saying is just think very simple, and you can bait it. Leaning back, breathing heavy, puts arm around the neck, lock the leg up. He can base that leg out, lock the arm up by grabbing the back of your head. Don't grab his arm. If you grab somebody's arm, he's going to pull it out right away. It feels as you're going to do something, which you are. But if you grab the back of your head, it doesn't really feel like you're doing something. Very deceiving. Very deceiving, and it goes much faster. Plus, like I said, somebody puts, if his, he sits on me and he puts his arm around my neck, this is the first thing I do. This drill I did so many times, locking the leg, locking the arm simultaneously. You sit on me, and this is actually a drill that I use with my students. Oh, let's do that. Let's do the drill, so you can have a little bit of an idea. So now he sits in a bound. And he can decide whatever arm he wants to put around my neck. And I'm going to have to react fast. Okay? So do whatever you want to do. That's how fast I want you to do it. You wait for the moment and don't even give him a chance. As soon as the arm comes around the neck, lock that leg up, lock the arm up, push him to that side. Now, you can bring this also to a side mount position. And I had actually marked her. I trademarked her. And uh, I asked her if it was okay I could use this example. Because Mark is a phenomenal wrestler. And if he can reverse a phenomenal wrestler, who you're doing something right. He was laying in side mount. Let me see how I can do this the best. I think in this position. So, come on this side. Uh -huh. Let me see. He's in the side mount position. I gotta do it from this side. Stay there. Because it's better for the camera. Mm -hmm. This is around my neck. So, same concept here. I want to throw him to that way, right? I want to buck him up. So first of all, I got to make sure that I lay my belly under here because here I can buck up really high. If he lays on my chest, there's not going to be a lot of movement. So you got to make sure it's going to be high. Now, if his knee is higher than my shoulder, and this will happen, I'm going to have to make sure that knee is going to be in the same line as my shoulder. How do I do that? Same thing as I showed in the beginning. I do this and I push myself upwards. Don't grab the leg, because he knows you're going to do something. Now he's going to put the arm around my neck, right? Mm -hmm. Now if he's in this position, I want to throw him to that side. The problem is, he can shove this leg out and to, to base himself out, so I need to stop this leg. So I'm going to stop this leg with my arm. I'm not going to grab him. Grabbing again 
is the, the alarm bell going off in his mind and he's going to reposition. I just put my arm on the ground and I press it hard on the ground. But wait, how am I going to trap this arm now and push it over? I came up with an overhand grip, an overhand monkey grip. One, two. And once you have it here, you can reverse them. So I gave myself a third hand, so to say, by simply using this one to lock up that arm so we can't base it out, locked up the leg by pushing my arm next to it so we can shove it out, took his base away, and then I reversed him to the side. Now, needless to say, you don't only want to do this, you want to have backdoor escapes, there's way more reversals, but mixing it up is always the best thing to do. Would you use that one from half guard? Uh, from half guard also, yeah. I don't know. From half guard you can do exactly the same, overhead grip. The thing is with the overhead grip, make it a monkey grip. Don't go with the thumb around because then you don't have grip, uh, not enough strength. If I do this and I pull it, there's nothing you can do. We sit here at the Krav Maga school, there's a, there's a certain move that they put a knife on your throat from the back. And the only thing you have to do is this. I pull down. That's also a monkey grip. And you push it down. I can put your knife, put a real knife in your, in your hand and you can do this to me. Once I do this, there's no way you're going to touch my neck. This is such a strong grip because I just pull it down. That's exactly the same kind of grip that I'm using for this reversal. So, monkey grip. Do not put the thumb around. All right? This, we're going to keep it short with reversals. There's a plethora more, of course, but we have a lot more to cover. We're going to go to some other things. Uh, a move that I invented, and I cannot be the inventor. It probably was there a long time around. Uh, it's called the boss with the neck crank. Now, first of all, it's not a neck crank. I gave that name way too fast. It's kind of a body crunch. Now, if you understand breathing, how that works, and you hear me talk a lot about breathing, if you can't expand your chest, you can't fill up your lungs with air. Your lungs are two bags. The only way for your lungs to open is by chest expansion. And that will create a vacuum between your body and your lungs, and that vacuum opens up your lungs. So if I can stop somebody from expanding his chest, I stop him from breathing. So this move, he actually, I told my corner, and I will, I'll put it, I'll, I'll add a clip uh, to this video so you can see I pulled it off in a, in a professional fight. And I told my whole corner, Frank Shamrock, everybody was there, I said, watch this, I'm going to submit to this guy. Yep, here we go. I grab his leg, I grab the inside of my legs, and now I squeeze him like a pretzel, and he cannot breathe anymore. Listen to him. And there you go, and there is me pointing to my corner. I told you, the boss with the neck rank. With the boss with the neck rank. And sure enough, four minutes into the fight, he made the move, and I came up with this move. Now, if he just took a deep breath in, he can hold that move for as long as he can hold his breath. As soon as he exhales, he cannot inhale anymore. And you got him. This is the dumbest move, and everybody taps on it. The funny story with it is that it was in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, the Pavadillos Jiu Jitsu Club. I was teaching there. Uh, that's all the way back in 97 when I started. And uh, the, the Marcus Venetius, the, 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 the owner, he said, can you take my class over? I said, I can, but not with the gi. I don't know anything with the gi. I said, if they take the gi's off, I'll do it. Cool. So I taught him. The next day, he comes in my class and he's angry. I go, what are you angry about? He says, well, everybody's Tapping on that stupid move that you taught him. I go, whoa, 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 back up. What, what is everybody doing? And he goes, tapping. I go, you're welcome. <laughs> That's what we want to convince, right? Tapping people. Yeah. And this is the move. It comes from a scarf hold. There's a lot to think about this move. Because if you miss one little ingredient, he's going to reverse you. Because the scarf hold is actually pretty easy to reverse. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, I know exactly what to do and how to stop him from reversing me. So, let's put your legs here head there, and we're going to start with a simple scarf hold, boom. Now, the move that a lot of people use is that he rolls his belly into my belly, he grabs his hands together, and he's throwing me over, and then, see, and I lose my balance. So I'm going to need to stop that. I'm going to do it wrong the first time, so do that again. He throws over, I'm going to stop myself, but guess what, now he can escape underneath my armpit, back door escape, and he can take my back, right, go on my back, boom, he's got me. Okay, so I need to stop him from doing that. How can I do this? Well, I'm going to hold this arm tight. I'm going to grab this. Now if he tries to reverse me, he throws me over, face out. Now he tries to go underneath my armpit, I'm holding him tight. 
even when we start struggling really hard right now, sorry, I'm going to close the distance. So try to go underneath my armpit now. I just go with him the whole time. Keep going. Try to, see? I just keep going with him. And as long as I keep going with him, closing that distance, he cannot reverse me. So this is very important before you apply this move. Because otherwise you're going to be reversed. He's going to be in a better position. Now the move comes. Holding the triceps. I'm grabbing here. And now I put my leg at a 90 degree angle. That gives you a handle here. It's a tendon that you have here. It's like almost God gave us this handle. Right? So you're flexing it. You got a good grip here. Because we don't have a gi. We have nothing normally. Right? So you need a good grip. Then I'm looking at that leg. I'm going to go over. Grab this leg. I do the same thing here. Now, if he pushes his leg backwards now, push, see, I cannot grab my knee. So bring your knee to your hand. So don't try to bring the hand to the knee. Just bring your knee to the hand. Now I do this and watch. That's it. That's the whole move. Now what he's going to try to do is that leg, he's going to try to throw it over my head. But then, you know, once that happens, I just bring my head lower here so he can bring that leg over. Because otherwise, he can catch it, catch my head. See, and then he can push me back. So you got to watch out for that. So that means most of the time I'm pushing this and I'm going to go all the way and I just start squeezing. And I make sure that he can uh, expand his chest and when he can't expand his chest, he's going to tap. It's a funny move. There is a counter for, which I'm going to show him, but not you. Because you never know if he's going to get caught in it, yeah. then he's actually going to win the fight. Mm -hmm. So that's the counter. That's one of those crazy moves. Then I have another move because I would do these crazy drills in where for 30 minutes, two minutes, I take your back. Mm -hmm. And then after two, I try to go for a real naked choke. Um, and then after two minutes, he gets my back and he's going to do the same thing. And we do this for 30 minutes straight after a normal workout. So your forearm is going to be like this big and you're going to dive. And what you realize is you do this two or three times, you can't submit anybody anymore. Like literally, when I lay on my back, I don't even use my hands anymore. I can literally lay like this. And if he cross face me, I do this. I just make sure that if he cannot go underneath my jaw, he can choke me. So I just press my shoulder against my jaw. That's the only thing you need to do. But boss, they can neck crank you. Yes, and that's why I came up with this move, which I'll tell you in a little bit. But a normal neck crank, they can't. Because if they neck crank me, I just go with the neck crank. And now he's got nothing more to crank to, so to say. And you stop the neck crank. So I thought, wait a minute, how can I stop him from moving to that side? And that's how the boss with the neck crank was born. So I have his back, and it's a little bit as the twister, but it's much easier than the twister. So first of all, total control. That means I have his wrist here, and I got the guard. Now this is important because if I let one go, he might roll into me, he might fall to the side, he might roll. There's a lot of escapes, a lot of things that he can do. But I won't. I hold him tight. Now, you see I'm working myself up a little bit. I'm pushing up a little bit. His head is above my head now. And suddenly I'm going to open my guard. He doesn't know when, so don't worry. I stretch, boom, and I lock up this leg. Now this leg is really tight around his hip. I can pull my right arm out because he cannot move to this side anymore. From here, I'm going to neck crank him to this side, grab it, and I'm just going to pull the head off. You see? So it's almost like a crucifix, but from a very simple position. And the more muscular, and you see these guys freaking jacked nowadays, the easier this is going to be. If you have a super limber person who, for instance, works in the Chinese state circus, you know, <laughs> you probably cannot do this move. Then you have to push it to the side and go for a twister. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, this move, it's a very simple, basic move. And it works all the time. So if you can't slide the chokes in anymore, just do that. Lock it up. Make sure that lock is super tight. When I did it to him, he will feel a lot of pressure on his head because there needs to be zero movement. If there's space, he can roll with you. It will alleviate the pressure from his neck and then this thing is not going to work. You want to try this one? No. Start, right? <coughs> Go here, two on this. Yep. And you see here again, he does automatic monkey grip. This is important. If he puts his thumbs around, he has a weaker grip. Trust me. Monkey grip is always the strongest. And then if I lay here, pull me higher on you first. Yeah, because now it's going to be easier for you to lock up my hip. Mm -hmm. Let leg go. Stretch that leg. Put it behind your knee. That's it. Now we can let this head go because I can't move to this side anymore. Now roll me to this side. Poof. 
Now the neck crank comes, and once that's secure, you can let that head go, and now it's just going to rip my head off. That's it. So it's very basic, super effective. You see, stuff like that, I really enjoy. Um, there was a leg lock that I did one time in Pancras, and uh, I maybe had four people clapping. <laughs> and I go, really? Nobody saw what I was doing there? A freaking genius. So we were sitting in a leg lock position. So we were sitting across each other, and his leg was already on this side. So for an inverted heel hook. But of course, every time when I went for it, he was peeling my hands off, and I couldn't do anything. So what I did was this. I pushed to the side, and I was sitting straight. I moved this around a little bit so you can see. Uh, that way. Yeah. So this is how this guy tapped. Push the knee down. This is important. Mm -hmm. He feels my rib cage over his shin bone now. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have to do, push the toes down. That's the luck. So your knees lock, your, your upper body is locked in my knee, right? Because that would be like the way That's the escape. Out. Exactly. See? Through. That's how we would escape. So, so to stop that, I lean over. Okay. Okay. My ribs are literally over his leg. And with my elbow, I push this leg down as well. And now you go to the very end of his uh, foot, because you want to have leverage, to the toes. Monkey grip again, don't go with the thumbs around, and simply push it down. And you should have seen this guy, and then he escapes, and like three people go, <laughs> they had no clue what they were just seeing. But I love this lock, and you can always, of course, go for a hill, or you can also push this one. But I'm gonna do something, I think this is the move. Watch what I'm doing. This is beautiful. I push his toes down with all the power I have, and he's screaming out loud now, watch. And nobody saw what happened. Later on, we also in slow motion what happened. <laughs> honestly, this is honestly, I think it's really cool because what happens nowadays is people are very like trained to defend heel hooks as well at the high level. Yeah. So they avoid you to get a a, a double grip. Like if you connect your hands, and yeah, you can off. peel it off. So I'll, I'll they almost give you anything but like two hands. So I think it's very unassuming. Like we just put the knee over there. I'm not gonna be thinking that you can heel hook with one hand. Yeah, like plus also if you sit straight, like if I would do this, he will peel my hands off, right? Yeah. Constantly peeling it off. If I'm leaning here, try to peel it off. I can't. There's nothing. Yeah. You see, so, and I'm with my elbow, I'm pushing his knee down. This is important and he showed you right away, right? He felt it right away. If he can bring his knee up, he's going yeah. to be out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure you do that. Now from this position, there's also, sometimes you want to go for a heel hook and they stretch the leg now. Pop. What you can do then, you can go with your head here, lock in, and you got the same one. You can put an inverted heel hook with your neck. Now, the neck needs to be on his toes. This is important, guys. I saw a very famous, I'm not going to mention any names, on the cover of Black Belt magazine, so you can figure this out yourself. He was in front of me, on his back. And this was the move. That was the cover of Black Belt Magazine. <laughs> this is completely wrong. Yep. Stretch your leg. No, just stretch your leg. I can't stop it. Yeah. Now I'm going to use two fingers. And I'm going to, instead of here, I'm going to grab his toes. Stretch your leg. <laughs> That's that. leverage. That's why this is called a toe hold. Because you're grabbing the toes. It's not called a foot hold. Then it will be this. This he can escape. This he cannot. Go to the very end, guys. The more leverage you have, the better it is. And of course, yeah, you can always go. And then, yeah, this move. As soon as he starts rolling, what I'm doing is this. I'm squeezing my knees together so he can push himself out of me. Because right now, if I don't squeeze my knees together, he can remove himself from me, you see? But if I squeeze my knees together, he can get out. I got him. And with the toe hold, very important, the more the leg is bent, with any leg lock except the knee bar, with any other leg lock, the more the leg is bent, the more power you put on his knee. Now, the trick with this is, because it's called a toe hold, you want to push the toes automatically. That's how our mind works. Don't. Push the toes, keep him in the same position, and now watch my left shoulder. I pull my left shoulder. I don't have to do anything. So don't force on pushing down, just pull your left shoulder up. And that will have the real power, because I use 5% of my power, and he already taps. That's how powerful this move is. This one is also cool when you sit somebody in half guard. 
You see this sometimes. He sits with his knee here, uh, in, my, in the middle, and his foot here, and you step on your foot. You see this move? Also, now, what I like to do with this one is this. First, I'm going to prep his foot, right? Because if I want to go for a toe hold now, look where his heel is. I'm going to have to go all the way around. I would like to have his heel here, so his foot more in an angle. Well, how can I do this? Well, you can do this by simply holding the toe and push this upwards. They have to say, this move, once you're here, you can go really fast. It's a very badass leg lock. You just pull your left shoulder back again, and that's a lock. Do not forget to figure for your legs here, so you keep this, uh, keep him close to you, because if you don't, I open this up, he can remove himself from it, and he's gonna be out again. So this is very important that you lock up that leg. It's a very fast move that you can do. That's a very tricky one, and it works all the time. Can you show the again? So, most of the time, oh wait, I can even do it from a uh, sitting position. Let's flip around, this side. It's, oh, I'm so happy you said this. Sit on your uh, butt, please. Because it's easy, even easier now. Watch this. This is badass. You see, this is what I'm saying. I've been, I haven't been rolling since 2006. It's a long time. That was my last fight, okay? So that's why I'm saying constantly things are popping up in my head right now. We'll get to it, but there's a lot of information coming right now. So imagine we're sitting in this position, mm -hmm. and I want this heel out. I push his toes, and I'm always doing this. I know where this foot is. I don't have to look at it. Yeah. If I look at it, he knows I'm doing something. But if I'm looking over there and I'm doing this, he doesn't realize anything. And now watch how fast this is going to go, right? Gun. That's a fast move. And for somebody who didn't do that since 2006, you can only imagine if I do this 10, 15 more times, it's even faster. So. I like how you're using your leg to kind of like elevate my, my foot and like isolate it. That's, that's it. really interesting. Because usually whenever people start learning leg locks, they're so focused on getting the hands around the, the, the foot, but they're not worried about trapping my leg. So I think this, this is major here. Oh, what it's you're big. doing with your leg. Because you're already like picking my foot up. And I'm already, like right here, like a person that is not flexible, but they're already be tapping. I'm yeah. Super flexible, and it's already like almost there. You haven't even completed your grip yet. So this, I think, is really interesting. You know, and it, it's it's a very important. It makes that point. You know, it's like doing so just I'm strong here. That's right? it. He's very strong. Also, watch what happens. If I start digging for it, look what happens with my leg. He's gonna grab my leg, and I don't want that. All right. So I'm just sitting here. I'm looking there. Poof. I got it set up. I just have his toes at zero blue. Got him. Keep him tight on you so he can move away. And I'll pull my left shoulder. And that's the trick. Don't push the toes. Keep the toes at the same spot. And then pull your left shoulder upwards in this particular position. There's another one. I want to go for a heel hook. And he stretches his leg. OK, it's harder to do. So same thing as we did with the inverted one. I grab his heel. I'm going with my neck here. I'm going to. Leg lock him. But now he's probably going to roll out. He's going to try. Well, once he rolls out, I got him in the knee bar. Now he's straight to the leg. <laughs> and I got him in the knee bar. The knee bar, let's do this from this side. Do you want to do right leg? Or no, same right thing, leg? same thing. Because then I can show you why I do this with my neck. Uh, so I'm rolling here. As soon as he starts rolling out, look, I'm going for a knee bar. Well, watch what I do. I bring his foot to the other side. Why would I bring his foot to the other side? Because if I have it here, he can still roll out. He can roll with it, go this way, yeah, and I pull the leg out like that. But if I keep it in between my neck and the ground, and I have his heel with both hands, he, I completely immobilize his leg now. He cannot turn left or right, the only thing I have to do, and I have no space behind me, so I can make a knee bar all the way here. If I lay on my back, I can never bridge as far. So with knee bar, preferably, you always want to be on your side because you have a lot of space behind you. Because otherwise you have these people who are very flexible, right? And your knee bar with arm bars, you have that sometimes too. They can bend their arms all the way to here. You can still have arm bar. That's the same with knees. So just keep it here. But look, he will feel my neck grabbing his uh, toes and my heel. His leg cannot move. He cannot go to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. And now I simply go move backwards. Very simple, again, very effective, works all the time. First of all, regular knee bars, this, try heel, bar, uh, 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 sorry, heel hook, regular heel hooks, try heel hook on me, 
As soon as you got the heel look, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here, I'm, I'm going to stomp on his biceps, and I'm going to push myself out. This is a very easy escape. You got to push though, because you got to open this space, and then you got to pull it out. A lot of people just pull, mm -hmm. and then if they have a strong grip, you can still don't do it. But if you go towards him a little bit, and then you push and pull, and you corkscrew yourself out, mm -hmm. the same way that he wants to lock the leg, mm -hmm. you're out. So for me, normally going for a normal heel hook, I'm not doing that. I like to go for inverted heel hooks because they're way harder to escape. Because now he's got to pass my legs first. There's a lot of movements that he has to do. Still, it's possible and we'll go over that as well. But let's see how I bring that leg to the other side. Because how on earth can I bring this leg to the other side for an inverted heel hook if he wouldn't allow me, right? Because that happens. So imagine I'm sitting in this position, leg lock position. And now he's pressing his leg on the floor. And I want to bring it over to the other side. It's not going to work, right? If he pushes it on the ground, nothing's going to work. So I'm going to have to clear the path, so to say. So what I'm doing is, I'm grabbing his knee first of all. Because as soon as I'm going to do this, he might roll backwards. And then I lose him. I don't have control of him anymore. So I always want control. I move back. I buck up. Push to the other side. And I sit back up. Don't even grab the leg. Don't worry. This is, this is the most important thing. Now we're going to use legs. We're going to pull the inside knee, and a lot of people don't do this. This is the most important thing with leg locks, pulling the knee. Because that will bring the heel up here, and once you got it, I make it very tight, squeeze my least knees together, and I just make the, the inverted heel loop. So make sure that you clear the path by simply bucking up, pushing it to this side, and sit up again. And now we also, remember the leg lock we started with? We can do this right away as well. You got that leg lock as well. So it's important to know because otherwise you can't bring the leg to the other side and everything is down to drain. Okay, which one you want to go over? I want the one that you bring your foot to your maxillary in your ear. Yeah, so an escape for a lot of these fighters is as soon as I go for this, they stretch the legs. You see? Because now it's harder for me to grab. Then I just bypass it. I grab the heel with two hands. This is important. Not just one hand, two hands. And I put the toes in my neck, not the foot. Again, the toes here, this feels very powerful for him. Mm -hmm. And now I just reverse it. And that's what I did with the other leg lock as well. In my neck, this one, I did the same thing. And then when he rolls out, then I roll him into the knee bar. But we already went over that. Most important, heel with two hands and goes to the toes. It's almost like he's slipping out almost. But that feeling you need to have. Because on a regular heel hook, I think I already can let him tap. Mm -hmm. I just this. That's how powerful this thing is. And if he rolls out, you got him into a knee bar. So don't worry about that. Can I try? Yes. And now, instead of making a heel hook underneath my armpit, I do it in my neck. Watch this. I grab his heel, I push his heel, and I pull it to the side. And there we have a heel hook. So here, here. You're gonna grab two hands on a on a heel. Yep. And the head. Here? Here, that's it. And now you just turn my leg. There we go. That works. That's the look. Yeah. And I then feel the, like I'm kind of loose on the right side and you felt super tight. Like, do you lay on top of your arm or do you kind of like... No, my, my leg was... My leg is not here. Um, there's, there's, my, my, there's my leg. Yeah, I get one more time. I'm sitting in the leg position. I have both feet on this side. I got both legs on this side, go to the heel. Mm. You gotta squeeze so, this yeah, and see, push I was, I was laying on top of my arm, you're kind of like in a supine. Position. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, so yeah. there see I don't have pressure, so you kind of like... Leave. Yeah, but first go, grab the toes, once that's locked, and make mm -hmm. sure you hold him with you, because his, his way to escape is to pull, push this leg off, mm -hmm. and to roll out that way. Roll with the move. That's what you want to do with an inverted heel hook. So if he goes for me for an inverted heel hook, he brings his leg over to the other side. First thing I do is push this leg. I'm out. So now if he makes the heel hook, you see, I just go roll and I'm out of the heel hook. So you need to have these, these situations where you know immediately what to do. But the thing in Pancras was, we were shoes. And Japanese guys are really good with leg locks. If you can escape leg locks with shoes, without shoes, yeah. it's a walk in the park. Trust me, man. I mean, you're sweaty a little bit, you pull it out, especially the stomping and the pulling. 
it's very hard to leg lock somebody unless they go for an inverted heel hook. That will be worse. And I think you're addressing it early is also important. You're addressing really early and like breaking it all the way from like the, the root. Yep. Like you're not trying to like descend late, you defend it early and you break all the way from the beginning, like the lock here. You you didn't you, you you avoid the lock and then you escape. Some other people they'll think that they would just escape is through a drastic grip right away. Yes. That's when your life gets broken, right? hundred percent. That's that's not it. It's not, and also with heel looks, for instance, in pancreas. I broke a guy's shin bone in pancreas, wow. and then a week later, somebody else snapped his, blew his knee out. Now we're freaking losing really good fighters. Mm -hmm. So pancreas came up with the idea, no more heel hooks. I go, heel hooks? Okay, so then I want to fight against Guy Metzger, and with Guy Metzger I did this. And I'm going to do it again, no heel hooks allowed. I'm going to push his toes down, and I'm going to grab his heel Ooh, to me. You can't stay there. Tell Guy not to stay there, and that's why, right, because this is the thing. Oh, and that's why I never wanted to watch this fight again, because Guy Metzger is a friend of mine. And I never expected it. I was pushing the toes, grabbing the heel. Mm -hmm. I'm not hooking the heel, yeah. but it's exactly the same thing, right? I can fall backwards now, doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can reverse this, it is such a powerful move. It's just bizarre how powerful it is. Yeah. But again, if you really want to mess with them, just yeah. sit here and just do this thing because nobody's going to expect this little move. Yeah. And talking about modern leg locks, the hierarchy of positions here, I'm never going to break or get close to break your leg with fire break mine. You know, the position that you're positioning your leg is here. Yep. I cannot get you this foot. Your foot is like hidden. If I try too hard, this is open. That's it. So I think that's like plays a big part in it too. You know, you kind of bait, you can you kind of bait me on to go to yours. That's it. And then you have the better position in here. You know. So look, very smart. Look what I'm doing. If I want, if I want to go for a heel hook on this on this right leg, right, and he wants to look for a leg lock with me, I push my foot in this position, because if I put it in that position, he's going to have to lean in all the way here. See, once he does that, he sets himself up, and I've got the heel hook on him. Or I can even go for a toe hold if I want. But you see, so I bait him with that. So for me, most of the time, leg locks defense is this. Mm -hmm. Good luck. There's nothing he can do. Mm -hmm. So I push my toes all the way to the opposite side, unless I want him to go for something. I give him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because then he sees, oh, that's the victory line. Yeah. And he starts rolling, and that's yeah. the moment. Maybe. Yeah, oh, and if he does this, you see, I go for that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do right from that moment. So sometimes it's a little, you have to give him a little bit and then hopefully, and a lot of these people, they're just focused on winning. They see the end goal and they go for the move. And that's when, of course, it goes wrong. All right. So even being a six-time black belt world champion, I think I learned a lot. You know, what I, what I think the, the biggest takeaway that I'm going to do is how important it is to isolate the leg and like the arm or whichever um, uh, limb you're working on and make them really weak. So now you can use your full leverage and you can use power. Yeah. I'm a big guy, so I have power. Yeah. But if I use the power too early in submission, you're gonna have power too, so you're gonna defend. Yeah. But if I almost like corner you where like, you can't fight with strength at the, uh, them anymore, and now I can use my power, and I think that's like really like powerful for my game, you know? And I think that's what I saw a lot on your on your fights, the highlights that I watched. You put them in really comfortable positions where they have no resistance. That's why a lot of a lot of the times they scream. Yeah, I don't know if you ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, ah, I don't see yeah. a lot of tapping. I see a lot of screaming because you put the the limb or whatever uh, part of the body you're working on in an angle where there's not much resistance. That's why I was tapping so early on the on the videos because it was so uncomfortable for me the angle that I had my my arm that there's no resistance. You know, I had yeah. to tap, and I think also like as far as like talking about the high level. They're gonna be willing, at least with me, they're gonna be willing to go to the very end. It's gonna be really hard for me to get someone in an early position for this to tap. I have to bring it down to a really tight position and then give my best, then end up screaming. You know? yep. So I think like that was uh, one biggest takeaway for me. And also, as I said, Jiu-Jitsu I think is endless, so a lot of like cool details that you do differently than I do, and I always try implementing and training too. That's the thing, because most of the time, you know, the people who win, win fights are the ones who do different. Why did Sakuraba beat four Gracies, mm -hmm. right? Because he doesn't follow the rules. Mm -hmm. He does different things. He has different setups. He's in the, in the garden doing the double Mongolian judo jumping. Why they, it's stupid, but it's a distraction. Mm -hmm. 
He goes next, boom, and suddenly he passes. You know, he's just setting things up with strikes, and he thinks outside the box. And like, if you do something that, again, I'm say, saying it to you, and I said this in the beginning, that this person never saw before, you got to catch him. And that's the same with striking combinations, right? You do something, you trigger something, you trigger something, you trigger, and once they start reacting to it, ooh, now you groom them, so to say, to that particular move, and then you suddenly switch it. And most of the time, that switch is the knockout. In my fights, pretty much it was all the time. And when people say, oh, a knockout will bring itself, and you know, and it, don't force on it, complete BS. Like pretty much a, a, any knockout I had was something I worked out in the gym over and over again. But I'm obsessive compulsive. So I can do something not a thousand times, I'll do 10,000 times. I will do over and over and over again, one combination. I keep freaking grinding it in because I know if the situation presents itself and I'm going to unleash it, it's going to be powerful. And then you have to think about all these little tiny things like looking high and punching low and there's a lot of body movement and there's a lot of acting in fighting. I think that's something also like I think I, I saw three aspects that makes it, you know, you bad at jiu-jitsu like faster. I think once I was saying like debating the tricking part. Yep. Like, you gotta be able to trick people, you know, because a lot of times you're gonna have the same level, so it has to, you have to create a distraction, have to make me re, uh, maybe commit for something and then get out of something, you know. I think a lot of times people think of like Jiu Jitsu or grappling as like head to head. Yeah. There's many right. ways that you can use strategies to, you know, like bail people, bait people to do something and then you attack them with that. I think that's like, you know, one of the things that makes your grappling level go to next, go to reach the next level. Yep. And also I saw, like you mentioned before, that you should do specific training. In Jiu Jitsu we call it specific training, where you had someone on your back for three minutes, yep. and then I take your back for three minutes. So that's something I, uh, something that I also like, I do it, yep. and I, I know it helps me. And the other thing that I see that you kind of mentioned that you do is that it seems almost like drilling. Like you learn technique and you perform in a creative way, you see the new angles, where they can escape and all that. So I think those three things are probably something that are really good habits for jujitsu jiu practitioners, you know. Yeah. I, I, I think those are three things that are not like position related or anything, it's more like a mindset thing. Yeah. And it helps, you, like I do it and I see you, see you do it right now, I think it will open up the eyes for the people that practice jujitsu and, you know, the grappling uh, good. community. Uh, let us know. Put a like underneath. Let us know what you think. You know, if you say, "Hey, that's kind of cool. We could do this again." There's yeah. uh, a lot more. I said, Once I start thinking, and all of the thing is coming back, there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out. And uh, like I said, I just like to approach things different. Yeah. And again, that's why I miss it the most because it's endless, man. It's like a game that kids. If you have kids, put them in jujitsu. It's really good for the mind-body connection. Yeah, you gotta enjoy what you can, right? As early as they can. How old, how old were you when you started? I started 14, kind of late. You know? Yeah, so, wow. But I've been training for 12 years now. So it really changed my life. That's how I ended up here in America, competing, you know, living from Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's going to change your life, but I'm pretty sure it's going to have a positive impact on it, you know. We'll put his handles on the, underneath the video, so make sure you start following him, because when is the next one coming out? September, I believe. September already. 1st, yes, I have a Grand Prix shootout. Uh, Eight people, uh, eight black belts, probably the best black belts in the world. It's going to be a really interesting tournament. There's a grand prize, so, you know, you know, we fight as fight, right? So looking forward for this one. Did you ever, any of those guys you already probably met one time? Yeah, I met a couple of them, you know, but the way I like to think of it is like, it's, it's in the past, you know. If I lose, yeah, then I can fought. start it, yeah, but the attitude walking in towards the match is like it's the first time you're meeting and yep. I want to beat you just as bad as I wanted to beat you the first time. So couple, couple, couple of that I've seen before, definitely a high level tournament. The tour, the, it's going to be a, a whole week of tournament in Vegas. They have 10,000 people attending already oh, wow. for the for the different tournaments. And wow. I'm going to be headlining the event for the Grand Prix. So it's going to be a really cool event. I'm looking forward to be there, you know. It's going to be streamed also? Yeah, Flow yeah. Grappling, yeah, streaming Flow Grappling. Flow Grappling. Yes, and as far as this, much much of this I'm not going to use it right away because I'm going to save it for Nogi. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I look forward to have a couple big big uh, super, super fights in Nogi. And I think those are the perfect to apply those, you know, techniques because you can study the game more and almost like create the narrative for the fight. Like you can see what uh, at this point I can get this guy on this lock and then create a distraction and then make it happen. So thankfully, th thankful for the opportunity. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, brother. I mean, freaking this guy, you got to see him. So check it out. September 1st It's going to be fun. And let us know what you think. And then we decide, not you, if we're going to do it again. <laughs> awesome. Thank <laughs> you.